Really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Earthquake Dragon, make sure you check that episode out at some point because, yeah, we have a 15 mana card in this set. But don't leave just yet because we have a brand new card with a brand new type of counter with rope counters? Yeah, that's apparently a thing now. <laughs> to find out what in the world those are and what this does, well, let's jump into it to find out. So, Frayed Rope, because this is a card now, is an artifact for four that says when Frayed Rope enters the battlefield, put a rope counter on target creature you control. Again, on the list of the strangest counters we have ever seen, yeah, this is definitely up there. Regardless of the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may pay two. If they do, they put a rope counter on a creature they control. Otherwise, exile Frayed Rope and each creature without a rope counter on it, then remove all rope counters from all creatures. That is quite the card, and actually, though this card is quite strange, I mean, again, whoever thought rope counters would be a thing, this card actually can be really impactful. I mean, essentially, this can be a mass exile effect where you can save at least one of your creatures. Now, obviously, you can't control the exact precise time that this is going to go off and exile all none. Rope counter creatures, all creatures that have rope, however, you know, wh whatever that is. Wh whichever creatures didn't, you know, get thrown a rope to, to save themselves from this. <laughs> it's a very strange card. But yeah, at the very least, you're going to be able to save one of your creatures, because again, when this comes into play, you get a free rope counter on one of your creatures. That being said, if you've got other creatures, you pretty much can't guarantee that you're going to be able to save any of the other ones, because, well, one of your opponents could just decide not to pay that two mana. And when they don't, then yeah, this gets exiled and every other creature that doesn't have a rope. Now, in some ways, this can be a very good thing that this can just go off pretty quickly. Maybe, you know, one of your opponents, say the opponent to your right, has a massive board state. You can just play this and say, hey, okay, I I'm so sorry, but uh, I have to save a creature I control. Uh, one of you next to opponents, uh, don't pay the two and just, you know, let everything else go bye-bye. I won't attack you with my creature because, you know, you're doing me this favor. But yeah, we need to get rid of that player's board. All those creatures are very deadly, so let's just get rid of them right away. That being said, yeah, on the other hand, maybe you can't politic it, and yeah, maybe some of the other players are gonna start paying mana to save their own creatures, you know, eventually save them, I guess is what I should say, but yeah. But still, in that way, this is kind of like a taxing effect where every one of those players is gonna be paying two mana to ensure that they can save at least one of their creatures, and they're not utilizing that mana for something else. And then, of course, once it gets back to your turn, you can determine if you want this to go off or not. If you want to, say, not pay that two mana and you really want to get rid of all the other creatures except for, you know, those four creatures or whatnot that are going to be saved, one on each person's board, great, you can just get rid of all the creatures then. Or if you feel like saving another one of your creatures, great, pay that two mana and send it back around the table for everyone to make their own decision again. Now, do keep in mind that obviously, if this is dealt with, then, well, those rope counters essentially mean nothing, you know, unless you can get it back. But yeah, essentially, all those creatures, every single creature in play, whether they have a rope counter on them or not, are going to be fine and not be exiled with this. So again, if you really want to wipe the board, you probably should just let this go off on your next turn if you aren't willing to, you know, risk this actually being dealt with. That being said, yeah, we don't see too many mass removal effects on an artifact that can literally be used in any deck out there. Now, there is definitely one that comes to mind that is somewhat similar to this with Oblivion Stone. Oblivion Stone is an artifact that costs 3, and by paying 4, you can tap to put a Fate Counter on target permanent. Then by paying 5 and tapping it, you sacrifice it and destroy each non-land permanent without a Fate Counter on it, then remove all Fate Counters from all permanents. So, this one is somewhat similar. I mean, it is a lot more mana intensive, but again, this one is only saving your own things, and also on top of that, it can destroy every non-land permanent, essentially, except for the ones that you save, not just creatures. Now, obviously, a key difference is, again, the Frayed Rope exiles all creatures that don't have rope counters on them. I'm still not going to get used to a rope counter. That is a new thing in Magic. A rope counter. Here, have a rope. You are safe now. Thank you. Regardless, yes, a, a lot more mana intensive. But yeah, I mean, again, decks that are running Oblivion Stone are probably also, you know, wanting to run another way to mass remove certain things, including creatures, obviously. So yeah, like Oblivion Stone for decks that don't have other ways to, you know, wrath the board when it comes to creatures. Awesome. Another fantastic card to include in those kinds of decks. 
And also, again, unlike Oblivion Stone, right when it comes to play, it does give you some value, you know, as long as it can go off eventually, because it gives you a free rope counter to put on a creature. And of course, because that is an ETB, well, we can take advantage of it as something like a Panharmonicon. Which, of course, is an artifact that costs four. It says if an artifact or creature into the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control trigger, that ability triggers initial time. Basically, double up your ETBs on artifacts and creatures. So you get two rope counters for free, essentially. You can save two of your creatures, and yeah, your opponents have to pay for their rope counters when it goes around to them, and then you can just say, okay, you might have all saved one, but I get to get rid of all the rest when I save two. Now, that being said, are you actually going to build around this very specific card? Probably not, but if it happens to be in the same deck as Ben Harmonicon, keep that in mind. Also keep in mind again that because this is an ETB, you can really take advantage of it with a blink spell, you know, one, a specific blink spell I should say, because it has to be able to blink an artifact or, you know, just a permanent in general, like Teferi's Time Twist. It says exile target permanent you control, return that card to the battlefield, under those control to begin next end step. So perhaps if someone was trying to destroy your frayed rope, you could actually just save it and on top of that get another rope counter on a different creature. You know what I mean? Or, of course, keep in mind with this being an upkeep trigger, you can also double up on it with things like Paradox Haze and Sphinx of the Second Sun. Paradox Haze says Enchant Player at the beginning of Enchant Player's first upkeep each turn, the player gets initial upkeep step after this step. And Sphinx of the Second Sun is very similar. It says at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you get initial beginning phase after this phase. Basically, each of these give you a second upkeep, and again, with that, you can decide to pay your two twice. Or again, you can decide to pay it on the first time and then not pay it on the second time and exile it to get rid of all other creatures. Again, not saying that you are building around Frayed Rope. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty funny if you did. But uh, yeah, if they happen to be in the same deck as cards that do deal with upkeeps, because again, it does have an upkeep trigger, make sure you keep that in mind. Now, that being said, like I mentioned earlier, there are certain colors out there that really struggle with certain kinds of removal. And yeah, I mean, green tends to struggle against removing creatures for the most part. It has gotten slightly better recently. But yeah, I mean, Azuri's Predation, Apex Altasaur, just to name a few, are some of the, you know, mass removal for creatures spells. Azuri's Predation says for each creature your opponent's control, create a 4-4 green beast creature token. Each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures. So yeah, I mean, unless you have an Anthem effect, uh, you are going to be able to take out a lot of creatures out there, but maybe not some of the bigger ones. And of course, the Apex Altasaur, it has when it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control, and it's got Enrage when it's dealt damage, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So you can just keep fighting and fighting and fighting for as much as you can, essentially, because it's going to be dealt damage. But yeah, I mean, you might be limited kind of, again, on that high end with your toughness and be able to take out a certain number of creatures. So yeah, there are definitely green decks out there that could use a mass board wipe, especially one that can get rid of all the creatures on the board, except for, you know, a very select few. So one of the very first commanders that came to my mind that could utilize Frayed Rope is Galta Primal Hunger. Or should I say, especially if you've got a Galta Primal Hunger deck like mine, where it is a Dinos in Cars deck. Basically, Galta plus a ton of vehicles. Because Galta is a 12-12 utter dinosaur that's going to cost X less to cast for X the total power on creatures you control, and it's got Trample, and yeah, again, it usually does cost 10 green green, but with this kind of a deck, it just costs green green. With a deck like this one that's centered around vehicles, you can choose when those vehicles are going to be creatures or not, or at least again, if you're set up properly, you can. So your vehicle creatures can help get Galta out when they are creatures, and then you play your Frayed Rope and you're like, okay, on my next turn, I'm not going to pay for it. I mean, I'm going to save Galta, obviously, that first rope counter, which actually, which is actually really funny to picture. I mean, Galta just has these tiny little arms and this giant body, and you're just like, Galta, here's a rope, save yourself! And Galta's like, just holding on, like, on the side of a cliff with the tiny arms and just somehow <laughs> holding herself up. Okay, anyways, I need some more coffee regardless yeah when it gets to your next upkeep don't pay the two and then wipe out everyone's creatures except for you know the few that were saved and you know obviously galta is going to be there and all of your vehicles are going to be fine because they're not creatures so yeah i could definitely see a galta dinos in cars deck utilizing frayed rope i mean another example of a mono green commander that could utilize this too is someone like omneth locus of mana it's a 1 1 elemental that costs 2 and a green. It says you don't lose unspent green mana steps in phase Zen, and Omnath gets plus plus 1 for each unspent green mana you have. So many Omnath decks out there might be a Voltron deck, and again, you're only going to have one creature, so you only care about keeping Omnath in play, and you're just like, okay, I'll play Frayed Rope. Omnath's going to be safe. Uh, all the rest of you can decide if you're going to pay the 2 or not, and then when it comes back to my turn, goodbye, all other creatures. Again, green definitely struggles when it comes to, you know, mass creature removal. For the most part, again, there are certain cards, and it is getting better at that with, you know, fight and stuff like that. But still, for the most part, a card like Frayed Rope could be very good in a mono green deck. 
Outside of that, of course, it kind of goes without saying that a colorless deck could also very much utilize Raid Rope, you know, like Card and Silver Golem. Colorless decks, obviously, you know, have the least access to cards in their card pool, so having, you know, another way to just mass remove a ton of creatures can be great for a colorless deck. Karn is a 4-4 that has, whenever it blocks or becomes blocked, it gets minus 4, plus 4 until end of turn, and by paying 1, target non-creature artifact is an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its cast cost until end of turn. So, kind of like Galta dinos in cars, Karn doesn't really care about having creatures in play, because you just need, you know, a bunch of artifacts in play that aren't creatures, and then you can turn them into artifact creatures. So you get your freight rope out, you say, okay, I'm saving Karn, and then when it comes back to my turn, I am not paying the two, and then everything goes bye-bye, you know, except for, you know, all of my non-creature artifacts, which I then will turn to creatures and smack you all with. So I can definitely see Karn utilizing this fantastic new card. I mean, of course, another option in a very popular colorless commander is cause like the Great Distortion, a 12-12 Eldrazi that costs eight colorless colorless. And yeah, it's got Menace. When it enters the battlefield, if you got fewer than seven cards in your hand, you draw cards equal to the difference. And also, discard a card with Converted Mana Cost X, counter target spell with Converted Mana Cost X. Kozlek is quite brutal. So have fun being even more brutal, saying, okay, here comes the Frayed Rope. Giant Eldrazi, here's your rope. Hold on to it, okay? And then when it comes back to my turn, let's exile all creatures that don't have rope counters on them. Yeah, magic, again, like I've said, is pretty weird at some point, And it's, it's really funny to think about, you know, throwing rope to, you know, giant massive things. Like, you know, Emrakul, the promised end, which uh, I'm pretty sure Emrakul can fly, um, which is just kind of funny again. Just to actually to think about that, about rope, um, you know, just having rope for a flying creature. Why are the flying creatures going away if, you know, rope is how the things are being saved? Rope's not going to do anything for a flying creature. Regardless of how it actually works, yeah, you've got a 13-13 flying trample protection from instance, now with a rope counter on it, and you also get to gain control of an opponent's turn. So with this one, you can actually choose what that person is going to do. So if you play Freight Rope and Emrakul in the same turn, you're like, okay, um, yes, you are not going to pay for that too, because you don't want to, and you know what? Let's just get rid of all the creatures. But yeah, of course, colorless decks in general are going to need more and more ways to actually remove creatures, so yeah, Frayed Rope can definitely find a home there. But at the end of the day, this is, yes, a very strange card, and there's a lot of questions around it, like, okay, um, how in the world is Galta holding itself up with this rope? And also, why are my flyers going away if they don't have rope? But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a... Really interesting card, one that can be very impactful, again, for, you know, green decks or, you know, especially colorless decks that don't have a lot of ways to actually remove creatures. Or again, I should say a lot of ways to mass remove creatures. But of course, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and exciting spoilers and maybe even some other really weird counter names uh, coming up. I have no idea. I mean, I never thought rope counter would be a thing. It is now, so um, maybe we'll get even stranger counter names at some point, like a spoon counter. I mean, what would that do? Spoon counter. Now that's got me thinking of the tick. Spoon! No, just me. Okay, anyways. And with that, this show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thank you again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.